guys, how you doing today? I want to show you and give you an update on my beautiful Hoya Lumieros. I absolutely love this plant. You can see how long it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful plant. I'm not going to be able to have it in frame the whole video, so... So guys, this is my beautiful Hoya Lumieros. Um, I've had her for about two or three months. I got her this summer. She's doing absolutely great for me. Um, I did talk to the seller uh, before I bought it. And he gave me a couple of really good pointers. But the first thing that I want to show you is right here on the end. Let me try to move this around here. I was very excited when I took her down yesterday to water her. But I want you guys to see. I'm hoping you can see those. There you go. Can you see it? I'm trying to hold still. See the bud? It's going to bloom. I'm so happy. And she has a couple more of them on here. But they're really, really hard to see. Let me see if I can show you. Here's another end. Another bud. Getting ready to bloom. So happy. She's got, well, from what I've seen, three or four on here. But she's got a lot of new growth. Okay, now I need to back off. A lot of new growth on this plant. She's absolutely gorgeous. But anyways, um, so I've had her two or three months. Um, I'll try to look it up and put it up on the screen because I forget. I forget how long I've had her. So you want a light, airy soil. Very, very well draining. You want to be able to water it and then the water just goes right through very quickly. Um, what I usually do, I have mine about 50, 40, 50% soil, 40, 50%, 60% perlite. I made it really light and airy like I do all of my Hoyas. You know, you want your Hoyas to be light and airy and the, the water to just go right through and not pool up. You don't want your water to pool when you water it. Um, so, and I wait for this, for her, I wait, this one, even though it's a Hoya, it does like more water than a regular Hoya. That is really the only thing that's sort of different about it, and the humidity. It does like a little bit more humidity than, at least what I found with my Hoyas, my Hoyas have been in upstairs in the wintertime. And they, there's, like, practically no humidity up there. And they do great. So, but this one does require a little bit more humidity. Now, I keep mine between 50 and 60%. Um, and she's she does well. But I wait for about, when I water it, I just kind of pick it up and see. And I just watered her yesterday so she's she's good to go but I pick mine up and if it feels a little bit light like than what it does right now but I'd say about the first inch or two when it dries down go ahead and water her um, you want her in very bright and direct light um, you don't want sun to be beating down on her or a seen a yellow leaf I gotta pick that off because what I do <laughs> but um anyhow what was I saying oh you don't want to have it in direct sun um, because the leaves will burn so but she does like a very bright light now I keep mine um, mine has been in a west window for, for all summer long that I've had her but I moved, her, I moved her when I watered her yesterday. I moved her over to a southern window. 
and it's I have white shears up in my living room so she is still behind a shear and she's going to be getting light from my girl light so she will still be in very very bright light for for winter time you want to um, kind of take that into consideration where she did well or any of your plants if it did well in the summertime in a certain area it may not do that great in the winter you may want to switch windows around with with certain plants but that's what I'm doing with her um, she's going to get one of my very prime spots in my living room because I absolutely love this plant and I want her to continue being healthy and growing um, fertilization I watered her or I fertilized her every time I watered her in the summertime um, I don't know about how I'll do it in the wintertime I read that this particular Hoya don't supposedly so don't take this for gospel but and if any of you guys have this plant and you've experienced fertilizing it in the wintertime um, let me know but I've heard I've read that um, it this particular linearis don't really need to have a whole lot of fertilizer but I was going ahead and fertilizing her because I don't I use fish fertilizer and when I make a gallon of water I put a cap full in my water every time and then so my plants are getting fertilized all the time um, even in the winter time I fertilize because I have window light I have grow lights and as long as my plants are growing I fertilize them but what's interesting about this plant is <clears throat> it comes, it originates actually from the Himalayas. So, um, and it is an epiphyte, which means it grows up on trees or on other plants, which is very cool. Um, I love my epiphytes, which is why I have several orchids, because they're just really cool to grow. Um, <coughs> But they do like this particular Hoya. Obviously, since it's coming from the Himalayas, it does like a higher altitude. So typically, when you're in a higher altitude, they're getting a lot of moisture from the air. Um, which is great to have it in a well-draining, fast-draining soil. But you still want to let your soil retain a little bit of water you don't want it so fast that um, you know the plants not able to soak up moisture quickly from the roots these have very skinny roots so um, which I think is another reason and they're soft and then the leaves are they look like little green beans growing or like a pickle plant or something which is why I think it needs a little bit more water than you know our normal our normal Hoyas I let my Hoyas practically dry completely out I don't let them get wilty at all but they get pretty dry before I water them but this one it doesn't or it, it doesn't like to dry out like that so the humidity does offer when you have them in higher humidity it does kind of help your plant um, this plant because it's sucking humidity in from the air which is helping it which is what epiphytes do normally you know out in the wild um, so as far as humidity goes I mean I run a humidifier so I don't have to worry about misting my plants but you can mist it um, you could put it in a bathroom because obviously bathrooms have a lot more moisture in them with especially you know if you're taking a shower every day or your fan your whole family is taking a shower every day <laughs> she would love it I'm sure um, something else you could do is <coughs> if you don't have it in a higher humidity um, you could put it like when you have a lot of plants together um, it naturally kind of makes they kind of make their own humidity 
because the water from the soil will naturally evaporate into the air. So if you can put it, you know, put her around a lot of other plants if you don't have a humidifier <coughs> and you live in a really dry environment, that would help, I'm sure, too. Um, I don't know because naturally my plants are all crowded together because I just have way too many plants. I have way too many plants, so naturally mine are all together. Um, so, in order for this plant to thrive, it needs bright light, um, humidity. <coughs> but you don't want to get it in direct sun. What will happen if you get it in direct sun? Uh, your leaves will get dry. They might get yellowing. Um, and, and the burning will definitely happen. Um, I don't know. I've not burnt mine yet, and I hope I never do. Moving her into the south window, I'm confident, because I have shears left. I know she won't get burnt there. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, my soil mix, like I said before, is about a 50-50 soil perlite. I don't do bark or anything like that. I just don't, um... Put extra money into bio, buying a lot of soil amendments. I have found that my soil and per, perlite works great for all my plants, so that's what I stick with. I used to do get all the extra orchid bark and blah blah blah, all that uh, coconut chunks, all that stuff. I I don't do that anymore. Perlite, if you're doing, you know, a perlite and soil mix, it works great. Um. You do want to watch out for your watering. I mean, not all plants need to be watered at the same time uh, on the same day. Like, I know a lot of people have watering days, you know, every Monday or every Sunday or, you know, whatever. And they spend however amount of time every day on that specific day watering their plants. Now, I don't do that. I water my plants throughout the week as they need it. Um, like my... My anthuriums need more water than, like, say, my philodendrons do, or, you know, so I just, I go through, and I pretty much know when I need to water a plant, so, you know, because I've had my plants for a long time, and you just kind of know. You have to know your environment in the summer, your environment in the winter. Like, I live in Ohio. I run heat all winter long. We've already been running our heat because it's gotten really cold here at night. A lot of times I can shut my heat off during the day, which is, is you know, when you're running your heater, obviously it's drying your air out more. So I have to run humidifiers. But, um, I keep getting, Ooh, man, I just had a sneeze attack and this is sneeze like 200 times in a row. I'm still sick, guys, so I'm congested, and this stuff just does not want to let go of me. But anyways, geez. Um, let's see. I don't know what I was talking about, but I, I have no clue what I was talking about. Um... Anyways, I think I was talking about humidity and environment. You just, you really want to keep an eye, a good eye on this plant. Mine dried out really quickly in the summer, and it's drying out really quickly now again in the winter because of the heat running. Plus, I have fans running in my living room to keep um, air on my plants because of the humidity. So, you just, you, you really want to keep an eye on her and make sure she's not completely drying out. Now, I did accidentally let her dry out one time. Um, and I thought, oh my god, I've, you know, killed my plant. But she actually did really well. I watered her slowly. You know, I gave her a little bit of water, let her sit, and then gave her a little bit more water and let her, let it soak down in. And then... You know, she was good. I don't think she even flinched with that. But I'll tell you what, I would not want to do that a lot with this plant because it could be very detrimental. Um, if I killed this plant, 
I would be heartbroken because I love her. She is one of my favorites. I know I say that probably on every video about my plants that, oh, they're my favorite. But I really, really do like this plant. I have so many favorites in my collection. But, um, so anyways, being that the plant is kind of native to a, a more humid, um, uh, tropical environment where they like the humidity, you know, it's no surprise that they do love to be in a humid environment. I know my girlfriend, she lives in a really dry area, my girlfriend Chris, she lives in a really, really dry area. Oh, you guys might see my humidifier kicked on, you might see some uh, humidity going around, but she has a really dry environment. And she keeps hers in her bathroom, and it is doing great. So, it can be done. And, uh, you know, you don't, you don't have to have, she does not run any kind of humidifier. She just put it in her bathroom, and with her taking a shower, you know, even if you're not taking a shower every day, or your family, you know, usually somebody in the family is taking a shower. But even if you went in and turned her shower on for you know, turned it on full blast hot and let it just run a couple minutes enough to get your bathroom steamy. Like my bathroom is super small, so it it wouldn't take long for my bathroom to get super steamy quick. But I'm sure she would love that. Um or you know, like if you can't keep it in the bathroom, like I said, put uh, more plants around the plant so they're kind of like making their own little humidity area. Um, plants naturally release moisture, so it does help to have them in a little community. And uh, they say that this plant isn't actually toxic. I looked it up, and I looked it up in several areas because, but you know what? I wouldn't trust it. I wouldn't want my animals chewing on leaves and this does make a sap just like normal Hoyas you cut it it has a white sap I know a lot of people do have to be careful you know of that because it bothers their skin it doesn't bother mine but um it is a beautiful beautiful little plant and really it, I would say she's really easy to grow um, as long as you are keeping a good eye on her with the watering and, you know, possibly the humidity. I can't really talk a lot about low humidity, um, you know, because I just don't, in the, I live in Ohio and here in Ohio, I mean, we have pretty high humidity in the summer and I have to run humidifiers. I run a humidifier in my living room. And I run a humidifier here in my plant room, so, and I keep it between 50 and 60. I try not to let it go beyond that. Like right now, my humidity in here, one of my gauges says 63, and the other one says, I can't really read it from here, but, and I don't feel like getting up, but, <laughs> um, I, I think I cover, oh, um, She's pretty much like a regular Hoya as far as repotting her. Let her get nice and root bound before you repot it. Um, and as far as pests, I've, I've not had anything, but I can imagine this plant for some reason. I can really imagine this plant. If it's going to get anything, it would be mealybugs. I just see this as that type of a plant, but I'm sure... You know, it could probably get spider mites and uh, whatever. But I, I do not know if any of you guys have ever got pests on this plant. Let us know down in the comment section. I don't like talking about what I don't know. All I can tell you is I have not, so far, knock on wood, have not had any pests on this beauty. So... Um, but for some reason, I can just see mealybug magnet. I, I don't know why. I think that would probably be 
another good indicator, especially with the velvety soft leaves. They're fuzzy. I mean, if you guys don't have this plant, let's see if I can get it. This plant is very fuzzy. It's probably not going to pick up on, on camera, but it's really soft. It kind of feels like a with puppy dog ear or a kitty cat ear. It's soft and fuzzy. Ooh, that's the one that's got the bloom on it. Let me put that down before I screw that up. And, oh, propagation. Now, I have not propagated this plant. My girlfriend has, and she says she did it right in the soil. So, um, but I've also seen other people on videos talk about water. Just straight water, perlite, spag moss. But I think what you would want to do is you want to have a three or four or five node cutting. And then, like, say right there, you would want to cut it there on that node. And then take these two leaves off on the node. And then stick it down in your soil or your water or your spag. I think if I was to do it, I would probably do perlite because I have a lot of luck with perlite propagation. I really, really like it, um, which I do want to propagate this soon. Um, if I do, I will show you guys and do an update on it. But uh, my girlfriend Chris did hers, I believe, now don't quote me, but I'm almost 99% pos positive that she did it in soil. Um, I'll have to remember to ask her about that, but I think I covered everything with this plant that I can remember. Um, I tried to make notes, but I don't do very well with notes because I just, I rattle on um, so that's all I can tell you. Like I said, I've only had this plant three or four months. It came to me beautiful. It was already a big, beautiful, healthy plant, which helps a lot, a lot when you order plants online to get already a big, beautiful plant. It's shipped great. Um, and it hasn't given me any, any, any issues since I've had it in those three or four, two or three months that I've had it. So, um... That's it. That's all I have to say about this plant. So I am going to shut up now and I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day.